this just be good. All right, so I'm planning for a weekend trip here, and I figured as I'm packing, I should give you guys a breakdown of what goes into my pack for a one to two night weekend. Uh, I'm trying something a little bit different where I'm strapping my day pack on top of my normal overnight bag just to have a go bag for the camera gear and I can leave the rest of camp. So let's break it down. Uh, I start with the cameras on the chest for easy access. And I like to <clears throat> store my Bronica with the film back down because it's uh, more balanced that way. I usually have my phone in my pocket and stuff like chapstick, knife, lighter in my other hip pocket just for <clears throat> other easy access. Let's see. Peak Design Clips are my favorite thing for packing. I'm gonna try to do this without dropping anything here. All right. Okay. So I will first start by taking off the camera bag. You guys have seen most of the stuff that goes in there. Um, nothing really changes except for how many film packs I'll bring for the large format or my lens selection, I suppose. So I'm gonna pull this off. Get stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's just the uh, 33 liter bag. Uh, carries a large format, 4x5, two lenses for that. About six to eight film packs for that. And then I'll have another 80 millimeter lens for the Veronica with another film back for color, and then a host of, you know, 10 different rolls of film, one of each, you know, color speed, black and white speed, that kind of thing. Uh, I have a tripod. I also carry this Gorilla Pod that the phone is on right now for recording. Um, and then up here I have filters and whatnot. I do carry a pack cover for the camera bag because that's more sensitive gear. I'm not too worried about any of my overnight stuff getting too wet, especially here in California. We don't really get rain. Uh, so let's start from the top. Let's work outside up, I guess. Uh, I usually keep my cup in here. It's just a $1 Starbucks cup, plastic. Works for hot liquids, works for cold liquids. It's really light, it's a buck. I don't have to worry about losing it. On this side, I keep a about a fifth of whiskey. Uh, usually I run something Kentucky bourbon style because that way I don't know about you guys, but when I'm out camping, my taste buds kind of get numbed, so the burn of the bourbon really helps. All right, like I said, I always take a fifth of whiskey with me. So, you know, gotta fill her up, no glass on the trail. Ooh, and this may or may not be empty by tomorrow. Moving these straps out of the way. Up top, I carry my easy access stuff. I have a pen. This used to actually carry all my camera gear, but now that I've trying out this double bag system, I think it's even better. I have sunscreen, um, both face and rest of body. I prefer the zinc face stuff. It's better for the ocean. I, double, I bag it just in case. Headlamp. This is a Tetzel Actic. Runs the AAA batteries. It was like 20 bucks. And you'll notice that most of my gear is on the cheaper end. I am pretty cheap in that regard. A little bit of DEET. This is DEET spray. I used to do the DEET um, bottle that you dab on, but I feel like this gets more coverage. If you're going out for a few days, I would soak your gear in permethrin. In fact, it's better to, to do that in general. I usually wear street clothes, so I don't have a set of backpacking stuff. I carry floss. Uh, I usually have a pen with duct tape around it. Clearly I'm out of duct tape, so I will need to take care of that after the video. Another pen, which I don't need five pens in my bag. Let's throw that back in. Yeah, so a lot of my gear is cheaper. Uh, my tent is my dad's old tent. Same with my sleeping bag, it's his old thing from, I think, before I was born. So it's it's got some heft to it, and because of that, I can save money for camera gear. Uh, this backpack I got at a used garage sale worked out pretty well for me. I do line my bag. Uh, this liner has holes in it, but at the same time, I live in California, we don't get that much rain, and I'm a fair weather backpacker. So I'll put my clothes on top, just so I can grab the one I need them. 
Um, wow, okay. All right, so my clothes bag, I generally carry three pairs of socks. That's like the number one thing. I like to have a lot of socks. I use wool socks. They're old at this point, but I think they started out as merino wool once upon a time. I'll bring a beanie and I'll bring my fingerless wool gloves for night photography. Um, a pair of PJ pants for camp and maybe a pair of shorts. Uh, I generally don't bring long pants just because it doesn't get cold enough for that. And if I do, I'll bring jeans, which are not good for back camping. So don't do as I do, do as I say, or something like that. Uh, the warmest article of clothing I bring is a Patagonia Nano Puff, I believe it is. It's synthetic, so I don't have to worry about washing it or losing feathers. Um, again, California, nice and warm. If it's gonna rain, I'll bring a Arcturix shell, but generally speaking, that just stays at home. Uh, beyond that, I have creature comforts like a pillow. Um, I don't like inflatables. You'll see it's a nice dense pillow and the foam sleeping pad. I find that I don't want to deal with something popping in the backcountry, so I can lay on the rocks with my foam pad and it's not a big deal. Let's see. I have a tent. Uh, it's the Big Agnes Fly Creek Ultralight 2, UL2. Uh, so again, my dad's from back in my scouting time. Uh, he doesn't camp anymore, so I took it. Um, when I camp with my partner, we have a Fly Creek, I think it's um, the frying pan, three person tent. So it fits myself, her, and the dog, which is great for what we do. And generally she'll carry the tent, I'll carry the barrel. But for solo nights, you gotta carry it all. Ah, uh, the barrel. This is just your standard blue, Bear vault. Um, I went for the bigger size in case I needed it. I'd rather not get the smaller and then run out of space. In here, I'll carry a bowl, sometimes. Uh, it depends on if I'm by myself or if I'm sharing a meal. If I'm sharing a meal, the bowl is good, so that way we don't, um, cause I usually eat on my stove pot, so. Yeah. In the barrel, I have bowl. I don't often carry this, but since this weekend I'm going on a trip with shared meal, that'll be that'll be clutch. Carry a long handled fork. This is good if you like the mountain house meals. Um, that way you don't get your hands dirty. Oh, don't dishwasher these. I dishwashered mine, Seed Summit, and it kind of oxidized. Uh, so now it like kind of tears up my mouth a little bit. I need to either sand it down or buy another one. But again, I'm cheap and I don't want to spend another $4 on a spoon. Uh, isobutane for my jet boil. Again, got this at a used garage sale. Um, in here, I keep my lighter. So I have a lighter in here, I have a lighter in the brain, and I usually have a lighter on my waist pouch. Um, lighters are light and hot, and I'd rather have more fire safety or fire redundancy than not. Um, some of my go-to meals are instant couscous with salmon. Boil up the water, throw this together, and it's, it's a great meal. Nice and salty, got some umami. Nice and warm. Oh look, another lighter. Another one I go for are mama noodles. Instant noodle. Uh, I usually carry two or three of these for myself. Um, they're also really good for breakfast. Kind of another umami salt bomb that I really enjoy. It's better than, for me, it's better than like the oatmeal sweets. And they just... They make you feel good because it's nice and warm. You know, it's a little bit chilly and you gotta perk up. Uh, sometimes I'll carry a mountain house meal. This is just left over from the snow camping trip I did a few months ago. Um, these are really great because you just add water and then they have a zipper. So when you're done, you can use it as a trash bag. So sometimes I'll often start my weekend with one of these and then do one of the other ones down there. Uh, you know, toothbrush, that's always clutch. And for that, I use my electric toothbrush head. Um, it's light enough, and I don't need to chop up a toothbrush like a ultralight savage. Um, I will also keep a little bit of bouillon just to elevate some of my meals. And then a bunch of hot chocolates, oatmeals, um, grated cheese and pepper from Costco, pizza, cafeteria, a little bit of hot tea. Um, 
What's not packed in here right now is my AeroPress. I'll generally either pre-grind or buy ground and put some in a little baggie and bring the AeroPress with me and use that with my Starbucks cup in the field. Works out great. Um, I used to do the Starbucks vias, but I just found that if I'm going camping, I may as well make my coffee nice. I mean, there's nothing wrong with vias. I like the via, but can't beat a fresh air press. All right, I'm gonna pack this up and rejoin you here. All right, so that's the barrel and it acts as a chair camp. Although I do like to sit on my sleeping pad. That's, that's nice. All right, I think that's everything out of the main. So we'll now turn it to you guys. Side pouches, these are semi-easy access. Carry a seating pad. Again, doubles is one of these. I might abandon this soon, simply because I have been using the sleeping pad for that purpose. Carry a trowel and some three-ply toilet paper. It's, uh, it's a good stuff. Um, do note that if you're going somewhere where there are them, bring a wag bag. These do suck, but if they're necessary, the necessary follow the rules. I carry anywhere from 50 to 100 feet of rope. Um, it's good for bear bagging if you need to do that kind of thing or tying a guy line for anything, some emergencies, you know. I've used this like three times in my life, but it's just peace of mind. And I carry a bunch of extra trash bags. Um, in a pinch, they'll work as a pack cover. I sometimes carry a duck back bag, but you know, spring shower might catch me off guard. And I'd rather just use a trash bag than uh, always carry the duck back. Uh, let's see, other side. I have more trash bags. And this is a ooh, moldy, that's really gross. A moldy water bladder. This end goes in the lake or river and it connects to my Sawyer squeeze. And so it just threads on like so. And then I've put a quick release up here and that way I can come up to my water bladder, disconnect this, plug in the Sawyer, and then just literally squeeze this in like so. Uh, it's, I find it way better than the original Sawyer bags. Those were harder plastic, more rigid, and not good for uh, filling. Uh, so this has a nice wide mouth, similar to, I'm not gonna open that because it's probably gonna smell. Um, similar to the Osprey bag that I have in here, I carry a two and a half liter bladder, and this is also two liters. So that way, when I'm in camp, I have two and a half of good water, another two that I can filter when I need it. I always carry a couple of hand or feet warmers, just in case, you know, a little morale boost. It's like, oh, I'm a little chilly, this helps. Carry a sewing kit. Um, back in my scouting time, one day my backpack strap ripped and one of the scout adults were able to show me how to sufficiently sew my strap pack on, not with the thread, but with floss. And so that was really handy. Um, we were out there for another four days, so it worked out. And floss is super strong and it worked out perfectly. Uh, following that, I carry a knife. Um, this is a multi-tool that I don't know where I got it. It says Gerber on it. I rarely use it, but you know, the pliers help sometimes, I bet. Another pen, extra batteries for my headlamp, and one more lighter. And then lastly, more floss. Um, like I said, floss is great for emergency situations. Nice and strong. Also good for teeth. Floss every night. Roll this back up and probably order another one. I need it for this weekend, so we'll See how that goes. Maybe I'll vinegar it over the night. We'll see. Uh, let's see. I have the Thermarest pad down here. This never changes. You know, the, I think it's a Z-Lite. I've had this since I was like 10. And it's, uh, it's all torn up and battered, but you know, it'll... Oh, it's the ridge rest. It'll, uh, it'll last my lifetime. 
like I said, I don't like air mattresses. I have nothing, I mean, they're super comfortable, but I just am a stickler in my old ways and I will always use the ridge rest. And then down here I have a 20 degree bag, I think. <clears throat> it's older than I am, um, but it works in the snow. I have snow camped in this at least eight or nine times. That's both in a cave and in a tent. Um, two years ago it hit four degrees and I was really cold, but it works. Um, so it's kind of dense, it's synthetic, it's not the best sleep bag out there, but I don't feel like throwing another $200 at a sleeping bag. So that's that. I think that's everything out of the pack. I'm going to now recombobulate all of this and then do a really quick rundown with the camera bag. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll reconvene in a second. All right, so before this weekend, I have been stuffing all of my camera stuff <clears throat> into my backpack, which you might've seen on one of my other trips. Uh, it was really cumbersome because, you know, this is 65 liters, which isn't small, but right now I have enough for one person's overnight or two night, and it's full, right? So adding another, you know, four by five camera, the lenses, the medium format back, Etc. Etc. It un suddenly lifted everything off my, off the inside shell, and it made it really hard to pack. So this time, I'm going to try to strap it on top. And for the most part, it seems pretty good in trial runs around the house. So hopefully, the weekend will will tell me if that is the case or not. So, camera bag. Oh wait, let's do footwear. Uh, I used to do heavy duty Keens. They were like three pounds together and, you know, worn weight is carried weight. So at the same garage sale where I got all the cool stuff, I got these Ultras. These are Lone Peak, something like that. Uh, so I was able to get some Ultras at that same garage sale, which is pretty sweet. I just threw my insoles in there and they fit like a charm. Um, they're nice and light. They are not waterproof. And I prefer that because I don't want to have buckets once they fill the water. So I like the quick dry feature. Um, and then I don't have to worry about getting holes cause you know, that's kind of my MO, you know, I wear stuff till they die. Um, there's zero tread left because I've worn them so much, but you know, they work out for me. Um, there's no ankle support. So if you have ankle issues, I can't recommend these for backpacking, but you know, I'm pretty okay with my foot placement. I don't use poles anymore. Um, so, you know, it's all right. And then depending on where I'm going, I will wear ankle gaiters. This is just to keep sand and dirt out of your, out of your feet. You never want to get hitchhikers. That always sucks. So they just kind of go on like that. It's nice. You know, it's ultralight. Um, I have some heavier duty ones that are canvas. I want to say those are good for snow, uh, not good for summer hiking. And the part that you guys care about, the camera bag. So I'll always bring a tripod. And recently I've been bringing two. Um, I have this carbon fiber pod for my actual cameras. And it's a Arca plate on top. And so that way it matches up with the Arca plate on the foot of my bird lens, the Arca plate for the peak design clip. And basically all of my ecosystem is now Arca, which is great. Up here I have a red filter for the biggest, well second biggest lens that I have, which is 70, 82 millimeter, 82, a circular polarizer 82, and because this weekend I'm bringing infrared, I have a 70, 720 nanometer, 82 millimeter, and then up here I also have step up rings, step down rings. The Bronca 80 millimeter has a 67 millimeter thread, so this works perfectly. Um, but the 40 millimeter that I've been using has a 95 millimeter thread, so it's on its own. I'm not buying step up rings for that. 
at this point I'm kind of over buying extra rings for the lenses. I keep getting bigger and bigger. Uh, let's see. Oh, in the hip pouch, I carry my release cable. In the event that I need to just quickly throw the camera down, I can just grab a release cable. And on the other side, I carry one roll of both black and white. So this is FOMA 100 and Portrait 120. No, Portrait 160. Um, these are just in case that on the go, I want to refill the camera back. I can do so without having to stop, take off the pack, etc. Up here, I'll keep a bulb release that is missing its tip. So that'll need to be fixed. That should just slot right back on. I've only used it a handful of times, but you never know. It's not that heavy. A clip bar just for snackage. And I usually don't snack on the trail, but if I do get absolutely hungry, then I, that's like my backup. Uh, back here, these are, you know, for personal use. I have a couple of knee braces because I'm getting old and everything hurts. Also because I'm carrying, you know, 75 pounds on my back all the time. Uh, for my digital, I'll carry two lenses. Generally don't carry the bird lens, but because I'm, I had already packed everything before I wanted to do the video, I threw, these, threw that on. I have my 8mm fisheye, which after crop conversion, that's 16 millimeters, And then I have my 1240, which is 24 to 80. Um, those generally will live on the camera itself. I'm trying out an auto A110 lens this weekend as my primary lens, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, in this pouch, this pouch came with um, one of my underwater lights. I carry, for starters, another film back. This carries color. I usually rock black and white primarily. I'll have my 80 millimeter with the hood, and then I will carry any extra film I need. Uh, I was thinking of running the Nikonos this weekend because we are sitting around doing nothing at a lake, so I might bring Nikonos. Uh, but otherwise, I carry just a host of different 120 stocks. Um, I'll usually carry medium to upper medium, black and white, and color. So I have like Acros 2, which is what, 120 speed, 100 speed, something like that, 100 speed. I have Holga 400, FOMA 400, HP 5, I think currently loaded is FP4 125. I'm gonna try out Delta 100 soon, maybe some Pan F. And then I have Pro 400H. Ektar, my favorite, another Ektar, my favorite, Portrait 400, and Lomo Purple for those sweet purple tones. Those are the stocks I carry. Um, I generally go through one or two rolls a weekend, but I'll carry all of it just in case. You never know. I'd rather have more options than not. I am not on the mindset of just carry one stock, one camera. Maybe one day I'll try it, but... Until then, I'm just gonna carry everything and figure it out as I go. I have a BTSZ, I think it is, lens hood, or a large format dark hood. You've seen that plenty of times. And I carry, this is six film holders, that's 12 shots. Uh, I'll sometimes carry up to 10. Depends on how much shooting I wanna do. Um, this weekend, I'm just gonna roll with mostly FOMA and a little bit of FP4 and Ektar just in case, but I'm testing out some new old stock of dark lines that I got, so I'm just gonna run the cheapest film I have. And then I have these uh, RT, RPT lens cases that came with my camera. Um, I have in one of them the 210, 210 what? I don't know. Uh, Simar S, Schneider Cruise Neck. Um, it has a sweet RB67 hood on it. Uh, it. Again, it came with that, so you know I'm not gonna change that at all. And then on the other side, I have a uh, Nikkor 120 F8. These are not ideal for backpacking because they are kind of heavy, but you know. You know me, I don't care. Um, but in a practical sense, these are not great for 
backpacking. I also don't really use them when I backpack, but that's a whole different story. And then the last piece is the Wista 4x5. The whole reason I started this YouTube channel. Um, it is loaded with the Schneider Super Angulon 75mm F4? F8? F8? I think. It's the only lens that fits in the collapsible system. Come on. It has to go in backwards and the release, the shutter cocking mechanism always gets caught. Uh, 75, 5.6. Super angle on shutter cushion neck. And that's my setup. You know, uh, I have only been doing the photo thing for a few years, but I've been backpacking for almost 20. And so my kit is kind of a conglomeration of I am too stuck in my way to change stuff or too cheap to upgrade. And you know, it works for me. I can't say it'll work for everyone. Uh, but if you ever need advice, number one advice is more socks. Uh, number two is bring more water or water filtration. Um, and so yeah, that's, uh, that's my kit. It's pretty heavy. I can't advise doing stuff like this. Um, I wish I had known about a couple of the other large format YouTubers before I started doing this to watch them, see what they do, see their gear setups, and talk myself out of it. But it was too late. By the time I started watching YouTubers, I had already invested heavily in the camera systems, and I had already started doing it. Because nowadays, I'm kind of tired. Uh, you'll notice I don't really carry a loop. I probably should. I actually took it out of my bag at one point and forgot to put it back in. But for the most part, my my photography is at f22 or smaller, so it's not a huge deal. But I think this weekend I might try some portraiture. Uh, I'm just doing a bachelor party backpacking trip thing. So maybe I will bring the loop, do some portraits out in the field. Don't slide. And we'll see how that goes. I, I'm pretty confident in my my packing. I've been doing this long enough now that I can quickly call my kit back together in two to five minutes, which I think is a pretty good amount of time. Um, in a pinch, I can just throw it all in, but otherwise it all just goes in just the same way it came out. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions on gear upgrades, I'm always open to hearing it. Uh, my climbing friends are very into the backpacking gear, and so I always, you know, hey, what do you think about this? They always talk about what gear upgrades they're going for. You know, one of them just did the Pacific Crest Trail, so he is pretty fr plenty fresh in the terms of backpacking gear. Uh, I myself will never do something like that again forever, right? Because I used to do 10 day trips, but I think those days have sailed. So now it's just weekend warrioring. That's my MO, maximum lazy, and keeping it light. So yeah, just give me some gear suggestions if you want. Actually for gear, I am looking to upgrade or just acquire a new microphone. Um, this video is probably significantly echoey, which I apologize for, but I have not yet committed to doing the YouTube thing. But you know, I can always splurge for a mic. Uh, I figure I want to get something to clip on, and then that can both connect to my phone and my camera. Because um, right now this is being filmed on my phone, which seems to work out pretty okay. I've now put out two videos and I don't think anyone's noticed. <laughs> Which is great, you know, um, or at least I have such a small viewership that it doesn't matter. Um, or I guess, you know, it should matter, but 
I am not that particular about it. So yeah, microphone suggestions, at least that'll help with windy situations, which is often where I'm at. You know, we live in California, so I often go to the cliffside, and wind makes it impossible to take any sort of audio with my footage, which sucks. So yeah, mic recommendations. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I need. All right, so thanks for watching. Hope you gain some insight on what goes in my pack and how I do it. And hopefully that enables you guys to get outside and take some photos. Go places that aren't easily pathed. And you might take a little while to get there. Come here, come up, up. Just so you guys know. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, well, she doesn't want to participate in this video, but she does carry her own saddlebags. Those are her little bit of food, her wag bags, her bowl, and that's about it. Maybe some treats. She's a good girl. That's right, who's a good girl? Okay, up, up. Bye, everybody. I will see you on the next trail. Next trail? Next trail. This is actually pretty comfy. This is pretty comfy. Yes. Pretty good. Pretty good. Ooh.